Hi all, welcome to CSEC Biology with Mr. Charles. Today we are looking at the May June 2003 paper 1 past paper. In this video, we will look at questions 1 to 20. As we move along, starting now, I advise that you pause the video before I answer each question. Number 1. Some fungi are said to be decomposers because they a. have no chlorophyll and cannot make their own food, b. depend on dead organisms as a source of nutrients, c. break down the bodies of dead organisms to simple inorganic ions, d. use plant and animal materials to make chemicals. Okay, so the answer here, the answer here is B. Okay, they depend on dead organisms as a source of nutrients. Okay, that is why they are considered to be decomposers. Number two. Energy is released from sugar during A. Photosynthesis B. Transpiration C. Respiration and D. Nutrition. Okay, the answer here is C. Okay, so if, if you selected that, then you are correct. Let us look at question number three. Which of the following is not true about decomposers? A. They release nutrients for recycling. B. They prevent the accumulation of dead organic matter. C. They are more abundant in damp places, and D, they are favored by low temperatures. The answer here is D, they are favored by low temperatures. Okay, that is not true. Number four, which of the following is not indicated by the direction of the arrows in a food chain? A, the direction of the flow of energy. B. The amount of food each animal eats. C. The fact that plants start every food chain. And D. Which animals are predators? Okay. The answer here is B. The amount of food each animal eats. Let us move to question 5. Item 5 refer to the following diagram of a food web. Which of the organisms in the food web would be most likely to die out if the grasshoppers were to be eliminated? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Two, one and two only. And D. Two and three only. The organism that depend only on the grasshopper for sustenance is the lizard. That's organism two. So as a result, organism two would be eliminated if the grasshopper was to die out. Okay, so the answer is two. All right, that's B. Question six. Which of the following pairs is not correctly matched? A. Osmotic control and membrane. B. Polypeptide chain synthesis and chloroplast. C. Hereditary materials and the nucleus. And D. Release of energy and mitochondrion. Okay. So D is correctly matched because respiration occurs in the mitochondria of the cell. Okay. That's the powerhouse of the cell. So that's where a release of energy would occur. Okay. The hereditary material DNA is in the nucleus. So that's correct. And the membrane is responsible for osmosis or osmotic control. So the one that is not correctly matched here is B, which is polypeptide chain synthesis and the chloroplast. Okay. Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. Polypeptide chain synthesis occurs in the ribosome of the cell. Okay. So the answer here is B. Let's look at question number seven. Item 7 refers to the following diagram that illustrates the result of an investigation. The level of the solution in the capillary tube rose because there was a greater net movement of A. Solute molecules from 1 to 2 B. Solute molecules from 2 to 1 
C, water molecules from 1 to 2, and D, water molecules from 2 to 1. Okay, this is 2 here, the water in the beaker, and this is 1 here, the sucrose solution in the dialysis tube. So since the concentration inside is greater than the concentration outside, outside is more dilute than inside, you have more water molecules outside than inside, water would move in that direction, okay, inside the dialysis tube from the beaker of water. So water is moving from 2 to 1. So the answer here is D. Okay, D is the answer. Good. Number 8. Which of the following statements show that leaves are well suited for photosynthesis? 1. They are broad and flat and offer a large surface area for absorption of sunlight and carbon dioxide. 2. There are many pores on the lower surface of the leaf to permit rapid exchange of gases. 3. There is a branching network of veins to provide a ready supply of water. And 4. There are often more chloroplasts in the upper cells of the leaf than the lower cells which receive less sunlight. So the answer here is D because all of the above are ways in which are, are adaptations of the leaf for photosynthesis. Okay. Let's look at number 9. Which of the following statements are true of chloroplast? 1. They contain chlorophyll. 2. They absorb light energy. 3. They are a site for the manufacture of complex substances. And 4. They are usually found in the leaves of green plants. Okay, so A says 1 and 2 only. B, 2 and 3 only. C, 1, 2 and 4 and D, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so all of them are correct. Okay, all of them are true about the chloroplast. So the answer here is D. Okay, D is the answer. Items 10 to 11 refer to the following, following information. A man has poor night vision and his gums bleed whenever he brushes his teeth. Number 10 says... Which two vitamins are probably lacking from his diet? Okay, which two vitamins are probably lacking from his diet? A, vitamin A and vitamin B1. B, vitamin B1 and vitamin B2. C, vitamin C and A. And D, vitamin C and B2. The answer here is C, vitamin C and A because... The lack of vitamin A is causing the bleeding gums and lack of vitamin C is causing the bleeding gums and the lack of vitamin A is causing the poor night vision. Okay. Number 11. How he could improve his health by eating more? A. Carrots and oranges. B. Milk and fish. C. Brown rice and carrots. And D. Fish liver oil and uh, eggs okay so he's lacking vitamin c and vitamin a so the carrots would help with night vision okay or the lack of vitamin a and oranges would help with the bleeding gums or lack of vitamin c so the answer is a carrots and oranges number 12 sodium hydroxide and weak copper sulfate solution will produce a violet color with a fat b starch C, sugar, and D, protein. The answer here is protein. Okay, that's the burette test. Okay, for protein. Good. Number 13. A drop of blood was added to 10 centimeter cube of a colorless liquid. A colorless liquid in a boiling tube. Bubbles of a gas which relighted a glowing splint were given off. The liquid in the tube was likely to be a solution of A. Hydrogen chloride B. Hydrogen peroxide C. Sodium hydrogen carbonate and D. Sodium chloride Okay, the answer here is hydrogen peroxide. The bubbles are formed because the catalase in the blood is breaking down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen which are less toxic. Okay. Good. Number, number 14. Which of the following graphs best illustrate 
the effect of increasing temperature on the rate of enzyme reaction. Okay, so you have A, B, C, and D. The answer here is C. Okay, that is the graph for the effect of temperature and enzymatic activity. Let's look at question 15. Item 15 refers to the following diagram which shows the position of some of the endocrine glands in man. Okay, so this is the diagram here. Number 15 says the gland which controls two other glands is A1, B2, C3, and D4. The answer here is A. Okay, that's a pituitary gland. Number 16. Which of the following substances supplies most energy per gram? A. Glucose B. Starch C. Protein D. Fat Okay, the answer here is D. Fat Okay, we get 9 kilocalories of energy per gram of fat. We get 4 kilocalories per gram of protein. And we get 4 kilocalories per gram of glucose okay starch must be converted to glucose first so starch is out of the question okay even alcohol we get seven kilocalories of energy from alcohol per gram okay so but the one we get the most energy from is fat good number 17 on what type of day is the rate of transpiration likely to be lowest a cool and sunny b cloudy and windy c hot and windy and d cloudy and cool okay the one that makes the most sense here is cloudy and cool okay that's when the transpiration rate would be lowest okay it would be highest on the hot and windy day okay good number 18 which of the following diagrams shows the correct arrangement of the apparatus for comparing the composition of exhaled and inhaled air. So we have A, B, C, and D, and we have different arrangement of the apparatus, and we want to find out the correct arrangement. So in two conical flasks here, we have lime water, which is calcium hydroxide, okay? And we have a, deliver, um, a capillary tube here. We have another capillary tube here and one here. Now, the idea is that we should be able to breathe in and out through this capillary tube without getting the lime water into our mouths. Okay. So, this one, if we breathe in, if we breathe out here, then the our air would interact with the lime water and cause it to become cloudy right however when we breathe in from here we would get some of the lime water into our mouth so this is not the best arrangement here now the same problem would arise for b so b is not the answer as well as c okay so the best arrangement or the the correct arrangement here is d okay that's the only apparatus that would allow us to breathe in and out here without getting the lime water in our mouths. Okay? Let's look at number 19. The following table shows the results recorded after 20 minutes of test done with cobalt chloride paper. Cobalt chloride paper, okay, is used to test the moisture in the atmosphere. Okay, so cobalt chloride paper on two leaves from different plants. Cobalt chloride paper changes color in the presence of moisture. So we have leaf X and leaf Y. The two surfaces were tested for moisture, okay, um, depending on the color change, percentage color change. So for surface one, we had 100% color change for both X and Y. However, surface two of the leaves, for X, we had a 10% color change. And for Y, we had a 50% color change, okay? So there were more moisture around surface 2 for leaf Y, okay? So from the results, one may conclude that A, leaf X has a greater rate of transpiration than leaf Y. Okay, if that was the case, then the percentage change for X would be greater than Y. Let's look at B. 
leaf y has a faster rate of transpiration than leaf x that seems to be correct but let's look at the others leaf x has more stomata on surface 2 than leaf y leaf x if leaf x had more stomata on surface 2 then it should have a greater percentage change because that means that more moisture should be around the surface okay because if the number of stomata on the leaf is more then there should be more water leaving the leaf okay as compared to the other leaf okay so that cannot be true c cannot be true d leaf y has more stomata on surface one than leaf x well, if leaf Y had more stomata on surface 1 than leaf X, then both of them wouldn't have one, okay, the same percentage change. Okay, so the, the answer here, okay, the, the most or the best conclusion here is B. Leaf Y has a faster rate of transpiration than leaf X. Number 20. The substances that react with each other in aerobic respiration are a water and carbon dioxide b water and oxygen c glucose and oxygen d glucose and carbon dioxide our answer here is glucose and oxygen okay oxygen oxidizes the glucose so you get energy in the form of atp okay so the, the answer for this last question number 20 here is c glucose and oxygen thank you very much for being part of my audience Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. Do enjoy.